Hi everybody, I'm Kelly Harrell and you're listening to What in the Weird, in which I talk about runes, animism, modern mysticism and all its manifestations, soul healing, and how all of that intersects on my path. The weekly rune was coughed out of the demise of Mercury Retrograde this week. I don't know what happened with that because it flailed and was delivered a day late to the base subscribers. But you have it now, and it's awesome, right? I've been on the prowl for a newsletter service, a new newsletter service for a while now, so I hope I can transition to less glitches soon. Anyway, if you're not familiar with the Weekly Rune, check it out. It's a rune cast that I've done for years, focused on the runic calendar and the current half-month rune. If you're not sure what a half month is, listen to the early episodes of What in the Weird or just go read the weekly rune at soulintentarts.com. It's explained there in every rune cast. So what's on the hob for this week? We've got some time still with Ansu's, which means mouth. We talked last week about how that most deeply references speech or in a more general way expression as in the breath of Odin, the divine life force that animates us, um, thus gives us a creative spark of divinity to animate life force in things around us, in expressions from us as well. If you've read creation stories, pretty much pick any one, there's a component of the divine blowing breath into inanimate objects, which then come to life and become humans. And the first thing those humans do is observe their environment and begin naming what they see in it. In other words, they begin organizing their consciousness. They ensues. No, the runes don't fit this perfect curve of a creation story, though they do echo components of it. Fehu, the first rune, is the spirit in form, making sure you can take care of yourself and your stuff. Arurs, then, is the reminder of your wild rune, verging onto Thorasaz, in which we are reminded that we don't have control of everything, internally or externally, though we have control over our ability to rebound. These are what I think of as Vanir and more academically Jotnar influences. And finally with Ansu's, we arrive at the Aesir with Odin, Odin's breath, the direct creation of folks through the drive to organize our consciousness. So if you've read the weekly rune, that's the focus this week on some deep personal level. I'm not going to give all that away, so go read it. But I'd like to talk in this episode about what that process really covers and how most of us at some point in our lives struggle to even get to step one of that process. The ability to express ourselves assumes that we're clear on what we want or need to express. That ability doesn't just stop and verify that we're mature deities with good intentions. It's just a capability that we latently have. Except that those skills aren't ones that we're taught. I mean, the base organizational structure to organize our consciousness may be there, that we don't just automatically know how to make use of it or make use of it well. It's just assumed that we know those skills and that if this whole law of attraction thing is real, which it is, it's grossly incomplete in how it's presented in the new age. But the law of attraction, you know, if we assume that that's a thing, then we're always attracting what we're expressing, whether we really know what we're doing or we don't. So then the big question is, Do you have what you really want? Isn't that always the big question, right? And most people that I know don't say yes to that question, which then begs the question of why. Why don't you have what you really want? And frankly, that's a huge question that requires deep 
knowledge of weird weaving to unravel. Maybe we can do that in another episode. Actually, we've touched on it in some of the early episodes of What in the Weird, so go check those out. But I can tell you that most people have no idea what they really want, or if they do, they don't know how to express it. And if you don't know what you want and or you don't know how to express it, how can it find you? How can you actionize your intentions to bring it into being, to work your ass off to bring it into being. So when you factor in that Ansu's informs us that we're working with the breath of a God as our own internalized expressive fire, and we can't really name our personal desire to manifest it, we're missing a vital piece of the puzzle of the creative process, not to mention possibly creating a whole lot of what we don't really want in our lives. A nuance of Ansu's is the significance of naming things, literally what words we ascribe to concepts in life. We've long known by virtue of psychology that what we think matters, how we form our thoughts, what words we use to describe them matters. That process shapes the way we look at the world. If we're going by the soothsaying aspect of Ansu's, then what happens after we express what we call things sheds insight on our lives as well. Meaning, how well those expressed concepts root in our lives also relies on what words we used to describe them. Ansu's hones in on the challenge of how we see the world and how we see the world is dependent on what we call things, or less literally and more figurative, figuratively, can you help me with that? More figuratively, the ideas shaped in our minds by the names that we give things. The more we can refine what we name things, the more clearly they can show up in our lives, or the more clearly we can identify them when they show up. That's a whole other issue. So what are the reasons that we wouldn't know how to name things well? Honestly, exposure is a big one. Exposure to a wider range of life experience and opportunity grows the vocabulary to describe that opportunity, that experience. We don't all have the same experience and opportunity. We don't all have the same privileges to develop that lexicon to the same depth. So perhaps we've had trauma at a young age and never developed the emotional balance to express feelings or around naming feelings, philosophies, beliefs. I mean, that honestly covers the bulk of us, really. People don't lack development in creative focus because life has gone smashingly well. It happens because some need wasn't met. There was a developmental disruption on some level usually early in life, so the brain wasn't even ready to process what happened. It wasn't ready to ascribe organization or words to what happened. So in that case, the synapses never even finished developing to generate that awareness and articulation. Here's one that really is only just dawning on the consciousness of even scientists, let alone mystics. You know, we've been having this conversation for a while, but it's not been something that has been at the forefront of modern animism, modern shamanism. And that is a limitation that's intergenerational. So that means that your parents or your grandparents were the ones who suffered a trauma or a deep lack of resources, which, you know, frankly... Deep lack of resources is a trauma. So an intergenerational limitation in which your ancestors, your immediate ancestors, the people who raised you, uh, were never taught how to name things. They never developed that synaptic flow. And so you were never encouraged to. It may not have been valued. It may not have even been realized or known. You never had the opportunity Your lineage, your recent lineage, has no exposure to that. And that is a huge component of weird weaving. Your ancestral lay of the land 
has everything to do with the dynamics that are on your shoulders and with the way that you interpret, engage, and, and shift them. Not a function of Ansu's, but the fact that intergenerational trauma can impact your ability to name things, significant consideration of Ansu's. So, in the time of the elder Futhark and Pryor, we probably wouldn't have had to do this part of the assessment. Like, I don't mean to imply that everybody at that point in human development was healthy and without trauma, or that our brain development was where it is now, because it wasn't. We know scientifically that our brains have evolved. But what I am saying is that we would have been closer to an animistic life template and with the organization of our consciousness more wild, more reflecting the organization of the ecosystems around us, which also means it would have been more pristine, this step of having to heal traumas or intergenerational traumas is a modern manifestation. With big brains has come big travail in learning how to use them. So in that sense, it's through no fault of our own that we don't just up and have nailed the skills of Ansu's. Yet we totally feel the lack of being able to express ourselves, which on the back end means we also totally see the lack of results in manifesting the dynamics that we want in life. Ansu's is in essence about the process of naming things, having clarity on the world around us so that when we have need or desires of it, we can express them with such clarity that our well-organized consciousness motivates us to follow up with equally well-supported action. Action isn't the focus of Ansu's. I'm not saying that it is. I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself and completing that weird weaving formula. So, eh, hashtag oops, latent spoiler alert. But that is the reason that Ansu's occurs early in the first et. So that as we follow the narrative of the runes, we are told up front in this owner's manual that we need to organize our consciousness well. So that when we get to the point of action, we know what the hell to do. Ansu's in that light is about literacy. It's about having done the self and legacy work to have a well-organized consciousness so that when you choreograph what you want with your words, you trigger an unconscious response to fulfill them. That's it for this episode. If you have questions or insights about Ansu's, or how to better organize your consciousness, actually, that's right up my alley. Hell, book a session to do that work with me. You can find my schedule on my website, solentonarts.com. You can feel free to email me at kelly at solentonarts.com or just call in through the Anchor app, which you can download for Android or iPhone. Also, check out the earlier episodes of What in the Weird by downloading them from Google Play or iTunes and like a thousand other platforms for podcasts. And if you get a chance, check out Everyday Animism, which I co-host with a couple of awesome ladies, which is also hosted on Anchor and all those other platforms. And, fake drum roll, if you have Amazon Alexa... Add the flash briefing skill, the wisdom of the runes, for runic prompts on the current half month and inspiration throughout the week. You can learn more about me and my work by visiting soulintentarts.com or find me on Instagram at Kelly Soul Arts. And I'm Kelly. This has been What in the Weird. Thank you for joining me.